All right. Austin, can you hear us? Yeah, I got you. All right. Thank you for joining us today. We yeah, no problem. really appreciate you spending some time with us. Um, before this weekend's race at Pocono, we'll go ahead and start with questions for Austin. If you have one, raise your hand. We're going to get to as many questions as we can. And who would like to kick us off today? All right, come on, get your hands up. Who wants to go first? All right, Kyle, Dalton, go ahead with your question. Yeah, hey, Austin. So, um, you know, a couple years ago, you set the record on the poll and you finished 30th. Last year, you finished second. So kind of give me your expectations for this weekend coming up at Pocono. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like we definitely get around I have, really well. And um, I, mean, fine. I think we it's have... Fine. Uh, What's that? All right, go ahead with your answer. Uh, um, so yeah, I mean, I, th I think that we have a really good, um, really good Toyota Tundra uh, for this weekend. Uh, I know we're not going to get any practice or anything like that, but I have a lot of confidence uh, going into Pocono that that we can have a shot at it. Uh, obviously, there's some good guys out there that you got to outrun and beat. Uh, Kyle being one of them. So um, I'm excited. Hopefully, we can go toe to toe with Kyle and. I know he's got a ways to go and to get up front in a short race, but I know he'll be up there at the end. So um, we're just going to have to do everything we can, do everything right. Um, seems like these races we've we've had really good speed, but um, you know whether it's strategy or whatever we got going on, uh, or maybe we get a little off at the end of the race. We've just been a little off uh, at the end of the races right now, and um, you know we're stacking up some top tens, but um, it's not good enough for us. So we want to go win races, and I think Pocono is a, a good chance for us to go do that. Yeah, and I was going to ask, uh, I read an article the other day that uh, at Texas, you and Austin Wayne Self made contact kind of late in the race. I think he was a lap down, and he kind of shot you the bird, and he said, you know, that's just part of racing, and that was just something that that's the universal communication of I'm not happy with you. So talk to me a little bit about that. Is that common in races? I mean, do you see that often? And that is kind of, I guess, the only way you can communicate your displeasure with someone when they've done something that you're not happy with. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, if you're not happy with somebody, I mean, putting your hand out the window is kind of really the only gesture you can have unless you're going to tell your, your spotter to tell his spotter to relay a message to him. But a lot of times that message doesn't get relayed. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, I mean... It's the, it's the product of, of racing that we're in. And um, Texas was uh, definitely frustrating for us. I uh, felt like we had a good truck. I mean, obviously, we weren't going to drive up there and win the race without a caution. But, um, you know, we could have at least uh, finished ahead of the 98. And I'm not really sure what, what he was thinking or what he was doing. But he was lapped down. And um, he was on our door uh, really hard and racing us like we were racing uh, each other for the same spot when he was back there in whatever position because he had issues or, or he was having a bad day. But um, so, I mean, that was just kind of uncalled for. I haven't been able to talk to him about it or anything, but it was definitely uncalled for for him to race me as hard as he did and and uh, be right down side drafting me and doing all those things. I just, whenever you're lapped down like that, I mean, I've been lapped down before and I just, I wave people by. I'm not going to sit there and race you whenever he's not racing another guy on the racetrack. Uh, he, he wasn't battling with nobody else for position. So, um, but yeah, um, I, I do it all the time. <laughs> I'll, I'll give the finger to somebody if I have to, to show that I'm not happy with somebody. Uh, uh, it's been one of those things that um, uh, it's been kind of one of those years where uh, you get kind of frustrated with somebody. And I mean, really no other way of saying it on on the on the track unless you're just gonna wait until after the race so that's kind of how you have to do it thanks yeah all right our next question is going to come from claire b lane go ahead claire thank you would you go talk to him would you say i don't think that's fair would you pay him back i mean it, does that even help is it sort of you move on after you flip the bird uh, i mean I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm already moved on from it and, you know, I'm not really thinking about it no more, but uh, it's definitely something that 
probably would be in the back of my mind if, if I'm having a bad day and, and, and I'm getting lapped by him, uh, I ain't going to make it easy on him. I mean, you didn't make it easy on me. So why would I, why would I just move out of the way and, and give you all the room in the world and, and let you go by me when, when you made it like hell on me to get by you. And it took me 10 laps to get by you because, um, you know, for whatever reason you wanted to race me like you did. So, um, so yeah, I, I wasn't happy with it. I actually tried to go find him after the race to at least have a conversation with him. And, uh, sorry, we got, got the air compressor in, in the background, but, uh, so yeah, I tried to go find him after the race and, um, I, I couldn't find him. I had to do interview and do things like that. So I just, I, I didn't, didn't find him after the race. And, um, honestly, when I got to Nashville, I didn't even think about it. It kind of slipped my mind. I, I wanted to kind of just talk to him a little bit and just see where he was coming from. Maybe he had a reason for it. I have no idea. Um, I try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt if I can, but, um, yeah, it's definitely something that's kind of, it's out of here. It's over with, but, uh, you know, I, I definitely won't be racing him as easy, um, from now on. And you'll be racing two races this weekend. How does that, I mean, is that something that will make it easy for you to get in the rhythm that the way it's stacked up with trucks and then Xfinity, how do you look forward to racing again on Sunday? Yeah. Um, it, it definitely is going to help being able to run the truck race, kind of get some laps under my belt, um, you know, kind of see how the track uh, unfolds. We'll also have the cup race, so we'll be able to kind of watch that race and see how it unfolds, where guys are running, if they start running in the in the PJ1. I'm not sure if the trucks will get up in there much or not. So, um, so yeah, we'll be able to see all those things. And then uh, going into the Xfinity side, obviously the trucks and Xfinity drive totally different, but – um, it'll at least kind of leapfrog me forward a little bit and kind of get me ready to go. Uh, I'm, I've never turned a lap around uh, Pocono in an Xfinity car, so it's going to be the first four or five laps just trying to get used to it, trying to figure out my lift points and all those things, but uh, having the truck race definitely helps. Thank you, and good luck. All right, appreciate your time. Thanks, appreciate it. All right, our next question will come from Kelly Crandall. Go ahead, Kelly. Thank you. Hey, Austin, I have two for you. Um, no, oh, you're muted. You've been in a little bit of um, on an upward swing here the last couple of weeks with top 10 finishes, but is it surprising? Is it frustrating to not have a win at this point? Uh, I think it's very surprising, and I'm sure everybody everybody else that watches the truck races feels the same way, that it's pretty surprising that, um, you know, HRE hasn't won a race. Um, I feel like we're a really good team. I feel like we're one of the, the top teams in the truck series. And uh, so it, it has been frustrating and uh, I'm not going to say that we're doing anything wrong. We're not, you know, I don't feel like we're really doing a whole lot of things outside the box. It's just, we're just not, we just haven't put the whole race together where for whatever reason, I'm, you know, we're not going to sit there and, and pinpoint it on the crew chief, the driver, or, you know, uh, pit stops. We're not going to, pinpointing on one certain thing it's just everything just hasn't came together for us um you know we've had good speed I feel like we we need to be a little bit better uh, seems like we fire off on a green racetrack pretty good uh and then as the rubber builds up I don't know if we're just kind of if, if it's something that I'm feeling that I don't like with this this new kind of tire uh compound and configuration that they got going on um but it seems like you definitely have to have track position in the truck series. You always have, but it seems even worse now because as soon as I get back in traffic, my truck drives totally different than it does if I'm running third. If I'm running back in 10th, it's going to drive totally different. And it's always kind of been like that, but it seems like this year it's amplified even more. Um, so that's been frustrating. It seemed like Nashville was a prime example. We had a really good truck, got back in traffic, and we just kind of sat there. I, I you know, kind of made my way back up to the top 10 and, and I stalled out right there. I needed, kind of seems like you need those restarts. You need, need stuff like that happening to where you can maybe get three wide with somebody and, and slow down a certain lane and, and make some stuff happen on restarts. Because once you get single filed out, it's really hard to pass. And I wanted to ask, after this weekend at Pocono, you'll have just one race next month and then one race before going into the playoffs. Is it weird to kind of not have maybe like a stretch of racing to really get into a rhythm going in the playoffs. It's kind of choppy between here and, and uh, what is it, I guess, um, gateway or, or whenever the playoffs start. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's always, you know, the truck, truck series is always like that. It seems like it always seems like you'll have races right on top of each other and then you'll have a month off or have however many weeks off. So I, I, I'm not going to say that I'm completely used to it, but uh, it's something that since I've been running in the truck series, I've kind of kind of sort of gotten used to it, I guess you'd say. But uh, it, it definitely it kind of makes it tough, especially when you go to go to a track where, you know, you might possibly not have practice or anything like that. Um, you know, getting reacclimated, it, it takes five or 10 laps to kind of get your rhythm back going and, and the feeling that you want to feel in the truck. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it, on the flip side though, it, it does help my guys. My guys have been working their tails off and I feel like, you know, we're not really behind, but we need to feel like we can get a little further ahead. Um, you know, with a couple weeks off, we can kind of regroup, kind of look at everything over before the playoffs start and really, um, hit these next couple months hard. So whenever the playoffs do start, we're, we got these trucks lined up, all of our Toyota Tundras lined up, ready to go, and, um, you know, we're ready for the playoffs. Thank you. Okay, any final questions for Austin? All right. Well, Austin, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. We wish you the best of luck this weekend in Pocono, and um, we also wish you the best of luck for the rest of the season as well. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me All on. All right.